Coleman reporting for Katie Chats here at the Open Roof Film Festival in downtown Toronto with filmmaker Jamie Kastner. How does it feel to have your film, The Secret Disco Revolution, screening here tonight? It's a terrific place to, uh, to launch the Canadian Theatrical Run because it's a party atmosphere. There is a band, a disco band. I don't believe they're playing disco now. Uh, so as not to, you know, they, they, they're undercover. It's probably part of the secret revolution idea. They're secretly playing punk now, so nobody beats them up before the show. But no, I think it's a great combination. People who've seen this movie at festivals have often said they feel like dancing afterwards. So it's perfect to pair it with music and right on the lake and what could be bad. How did you hear about the Open Roof Film Festival? Well, to be perfect, I've actually just heard about it as, as a cool thing to go to. My co-producer on the film, uh, Diana Warme, is a longtime attendee of the festival. So she's, I know she's been telling me about it for a year or something like that. And um, I guess, you know, you work in the business in Toronto, paths cross and you, yeah, that's how. How did the film come to be? The film actually took a surprising path. I went to propose a film to Bravo, which was then programming arts documentaries about um, Harold Pinter, the British playwright. And they told me, you know, basically, no one cares about Harold Pinter anymore. How about a film on disco? And I said, okay. I mean, it fit with my wardrobe. I was actually, I could have gone either way. I could have done a Pinter film in this suit, you know. Have you always been a big fan of disco? Actually, not particularly. I was a music critic once upon a time, and I've done other films on jazz and different things. But, uh, and I like soul music, but I had never been a disco fan in particular, but I did grow to appreciate it a lot more as one better uh, doing a film like this over the course of two years, or else you'll suffer a lot. And you got so many great interviews in the film, including the village people. How did you go about getting these interviews, and what were some of the most surprising things that you learned? Well, you know, documentary is a collaborative medium. I had a great team of people I was working with, a research team led by Jennifer Shin, you know, track down these celebrities for us. You know, we all work together, and it's hard work, as you know, getting celebrities to talk. Uh, yes, yeah, so, but I knew you could not do a disco film without all the big stars, or as many of them as you could get your hands on. So we have Gloria Gaynor, the village people, Cool and the Gang, etc., etc., Thelma Houston. It was a lot of fun. The most surprising was probably the village people, who in what I thought would be a warm-up question about their status as gay icons, as pioneering gay icons, I got their backup immediately and they said, whoa, 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 what, what do you mean? There's something gay about our music, something gay about us? And the interview kind of screeched to a halt and I kind of fumbled on, incredulous, saying, but what about, you know, YMCA? What about in the Navy? Oh, well, that was written by French guys who didn't know what they were talking about. Oh, why in the Navy was, was to get people to join the Navy. And the fun just continued from there. And then I was able to track down one of the original founders in France, who speaks English perfectly, by the way, and he had a rather different version of events. So, you know, a bit of a fun surprise there. And can you comment a little bit on the cultural significance the disco revolution had in terms of many different groups of people? I think traditionally the disco era has been thought of as a time of flaky escapism, of dancing, partying, drugs, crazy fashion, etc. And it clearly was all of that. <laughs> but the more surprising thing, a fact that was brought up by some revisionist historians who I wound up having in the film, um, was that it was also a time of a kind of social, I think there's a, there's a real case to be made for it being a time of social change. Meaningful.